Welcome to the May 6, 2024 meeting of the Design Review Committee. I'll let members and staff introduce themselves. Rebecca Owens. Meredith Crandall, staff. Benjamin Cheney, member. Martha Smirsky, member. Hey, Liz Eric Richard, member. member. <laughs> I think we got it. Yes. <laughs> All at the same time, it was perfect. Okay. Um, and uh, at this time, I'll let Meredith uh, provide an overview of the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay, so Hitesh, I'm going to be sharing my screen. Um, the stuff on the screen is mostly for people who might be watching via the live streaming. Um, but for um, the, there's some details in there for everybody to pay attention to. Um, oh, hold on, I've got to go change the little pop up. Alrighty, so for those viewing tonight's design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. If you want the full video experience, you can type this link into your web browser and I'll get a notification that you want to get into the Zoom meeting. Alternatively, you can dial this phone number and when prompted, put in this meeting ID. Um, and again, I'll get a notification that you want to get into the meeting. If anyone is having problems accessing the Zoom meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. Um, for everyone who's attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will help reduce background noise. Um, if anybody calls in on the phone, please note that star six lets you mute and unmute through the Zoom um, program. Please reserve the Zoom chat function for troubleshooting or logistics questions only. Um, substantive comments and questions need to be provided orally. You can raise your hand. Um, you know, we have a small group today, but... Usually you can raise your hand if you want to speak or use the raise hand button on your toolbar. Um, and then once the chair has recognized you, you can um, then speak. Um, if in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. I will now hand the meeting back over to Ben. Great. Um, do we have a, an, a motion to approve the agenda? Um, I'll move to approve the agenda. Okay. Who is the second? Eric. Great. Thanks, Eric. Uh, great. Well, now we'll move on to uh, oh, comments from the chair. Oh, oh, we get to vote. Right. We get to vote to approve the agenda. Right. My little speech here. Uh, Eric says yes. Martha says yes. Liz says yes. Ben says yes. Great. Uh, motion approved. Um, no comments from the chair. So uh, any other comments out there? Great. Nope. Uh, so on to applications. First is uh, 100 State Street. Uh, do we have someone here to describe this project? Yes, I'm here. Hello, Great. can you hear me? I, we can, yes. Okay, yes. My name is Hitesh Patel. I'm actually via the UNO's and the general contractor for the property. Um, who has performed all the work after the flood. Um, and I'm here to discuss and answer any questions the board has as well. Great. Can you give us just a little overview of your project? We all have sheets in front of us, but it would be great to hear from you what you're what you're doing. So so as you all, as everybody's aware, the July flood actually we are, the hotel was has a sustained tremendous amount of damages, especially specifically with all the utilities, all electrical systems, all HVAC systems, uh, all plumbing systems as well. So, and and the 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 the, the 
dynamics of the building is there was no possible way for us to remove move all the electrical the property had actually three different electrical systems which was located in the basement and all of the hvac systems for all the meeting spaces function spaces even the public uh, the all the first floor everything everything was located in the basement so so when we after the flood we were, we were required to move everything up above the floodplain line so so that that is the reason why we had to add uh there was actually already a shade there on the taylor street entrance of the property where uh, where there was already a shade there with the fences you know there was about like eight feet tall fences were there where there was a cooling tower there old cooling tower was there which was damaging the flood as well and there was some other environmental testing company had some equipment there which got removed now so we the only way for us to remove some of the half of the utility all the electrical system was to add an additional room there where the old chill, chilling tower chiller was cooling tower was and when we did an addition so we created a kind of a room with the and we we put a rooftop unit that would service all the meeting space adjacent to it. That's on the roof right now. So I think that these are the so we we are here to talk to the board and to discuss about because we want to we want to close off the the building is secured, but we have not put any facade on it yet. So we want to hear from you on what can we do to make sure that we satisfy your requirement and we can get the work done now, the weather is better. Do you have a proposal of what, what you're hoping to put on the outside of the building? We were, I was hoping to put in the same bricks that's on the outside and maybe the same facade on the top of the, you know, on the top of the roof line, carrying it from the other parts of the building, you know. It, yeah, it appears you've sort of started that with this, uh with some of the uh, continuing the facade around the top, there's some blocking on the roof, on the top yes. portion of the building. Yeah, we, we started it, but we stopped it because of, when you're driving on the Taylor Street, you can kind of see the little bit of the rooftop unit there. Yes. So from yeah. this side, you see more, but on the Taylor Street, you still see a little bit of the rooftop unit. So we were not sure if board is requiring us to do the parapet wall there or do something to or if board is okay with us start with us continuing this facade on the top we could we can do that as well so so right now we kind of stopped it uh, waiting to hear from your feedback on it did you change the footprint of the project at all we did not change the footprint of the project actually we placed this building exactly where the old eight feet fence is now. okay thank you I'm assuming you're intending to use brick that is similar in character to the existing building. Yes. And do you have yes, a square red, for that the brick? red brick that you see? So is that the uh, oh Go sorry, ahead. Martha? Okay. I, I was just curious. So that this building is taller than the fence. Is that correct? And particularly with a new roof pot, rooftop. No, no, right now, right now, right now, it's going to match. Yeah, this was the fence before, the red one. Okay. Yeah. The same height? Okay. Uh, actually, we meet the same height as the building right now, the, the other other building. So that way we can do the rooftop and all the dock work. We can, we can do it properly, you know, from the roof. So it looks better and we can get it done properly. It's about right. so five it, minutes plus or, plus or minus a few inches. That's about it. I see. Except for the rooftop equipment makes it taller in that one area. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I can I can either increase that parapet wall or we can I, I can fence it off or, I mean, whatever you guys uh, uh -huh. see. Yes, right there. So this is the only part you're going to see it on from the Taylor Street. Mm-hmm. Right. 
This is Eric. Have you thought about screening the equipment up there at all? We can screen yeah. it. You know, so I am uh, I am asking the board what material that you guys would ask us. Do you want us to put like some sort of a fencing system or do you want us to increase the parapet of this wall so that way you don't see that and everything looks like a brick building with the facade, white facade on the top? Yeah, so the, I mean, the white fascia on the top. The committee has the authority to make suggestions and, and have a recommendation on how they want that screened for sure. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see some trellising or something around it. Right. Yeah. Um, or, or just some solid, um, you know, solid wood surround. Or maybe brick too, or whatever. You know, I don't think we need to raise the parapet all around the whole structure. That's my opinion. I don't. Liz. I don't either. Yeah. I, I I agree with that. Just uh, uh, some kind of fencing around it. I don't know how much ventilation you need for that, but it really doesn't have to be all the way around it. It just really needs to be on this side and that's uh, viewed in the picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so basically the, fa the the fencing, right? So the fencing would be just around the, just where the equipment is, right? Not the whole wall, what I'm, what I'm understanding from this yes. view. I also think it would be nice if that fencing were stepped back from the parapet and not, uh, not flush with the exterior of the building. Yeah, I think I think we would be able to flush it back, maybe maybe a, a foot or so. Well, maybe yeah. food between anywhere between eight, like sixteen inches. As much as you can, building. while still getting your ventilate necessary ventilation. Yes. Yeah, we need we need that uh, little bit of clearance after that. You know, that's fine. Uh, I do just. Do you have a source for that brick? It would be. It would be really nice to ensure that you are getting the same brick. Yeah, we are actually. I am sourcing it out from Spalding bringing of a Spalding brick up in Massachusetts, actually, and uh, they showed me some bricks which kind of is matching very close to that one. Very, yep. very close. Are are those full bricks or just facade? They, they are. They are. They are uh, facade actually bricks, not a full bricks. And you will uh, carry that cornice detail all the way around. Yes, we will require that corners detail all the way around. And then how does it meet the ground? Are you going to have a, what cover, is there like a concrete detail that? Yeah, that's actually what you see is a styrofoam insulation, yeah. but there's a concrete behind it. So we did a foundation wall all already there. So on the on the bottom side, we're gonna meet the same line as the other side, and the brick brick will continue at the same same level actually. And then there will be a concrete board or something covering the styrofoam. No, no, uh, styrofoam will be removed. It's just uh, on this picture, it's not removed yet right now. Uh so there is a concrete wall. There will there is already a concrete wall underneath that, behind that. Actually. Okay. I'm trying to find. Something. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. Yeah, I guess my question is: does does the bottom course of brick meet asphalt, or is there a like a some sort of like level concrete line between so, the top of the asphalt and the bottom of the brick? I think the. The on the Taylor Street end of it, it's gonna meet almost very close to it, I believe. I mean, the, just the way the the grading is, because it slopes down as you enter towards the into the parking lot. So on on the inside the parking lot, we will meet the same line as the other one on the other side. So this is the view from Taylor Street back in October. So the the previous screening around the cooling tower had been replaced, but the like temporary system had been set up there. Um, 
And this is shows how there's a little bit of concrete between the brick and the sidewalk here. But the yeah, green. We will maintain that, different. actually. We will maintain that. Maintain that. Yep. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah, yeah. We will maintain that. Yeah. Great. Yeah, our goal is to match exactly the same thing so the two buildings don't look separate with each other. Exactly. That's what I was hoping for. Um, as far as, can we talk a little bit more about the screening that we're looking for to go around the cooling system on the roof? I'm imagining sure. this is a, a wooden lattice thing that is painted black and stepped back from the, from the edge of the parapet. Um, I don't know if other committee members have a different idea of what this thing looks like. I think that would be fine. You could actually put up a fence that has removable sections for maintenance purposes in case you have to do a lot of work on it. Yeah, and I guess how it's, I mean, clearly you're not going to put holes through your nice new rubber membrane. I don't know how you're going to hold it up there, but um doesn't want to get blown over. Yeah, no, we'll we'll secure it. If we have to fasten it with the the roofing system, then we'll get a, a roofer to catch it up after, you know, to seal it, you know, secure it better. So it doesn't. Yeah. Yep. Any other comments or questions? Not for me. Not for me either. No, I'm 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 good as well, Liz. Uh, do I hear a motion to ex? Oh. You gotta read through your criteria. All my criteria, right? Sorry, everybody. <laughs> okay. And don't forget, you're in charge of writing out the recommendations. Right. Yeah. All the, yeah, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> um. Okay. I have a set of criteria here that I need to read through, uh, which is for historic structures, the removal of historic materials or alterations of Ah, uh, the first the one's base. all the way up here. The base. All projects, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and, comp and compatible with characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. For historic structures, the removal of historic materials or alteration or features and spaces that characterize a historic property shall be avoided. Character-defining features, finishes, and construction techniques are examples of craftsmanship that characterize a historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character-defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced. Where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a character-defining feature, the new feature shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including, but not limited to, chemical or physical treatments such as sandblasting, shall not be approved. Uh, I think this is acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. For historic structures, any new development uh, shall be differ differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing, size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. This is acceptable. Uh, oh, staff suggests this is not, a, not applicable. Uh, location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, and trash storage and fencing shall be minimized to adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screened from the public way, acceptable, or actually, screening. yeah, acceptable with screening. And a little bit screening. With screening. Uh, alterations to buildings called uh, for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character and construction materials and features to uh, maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Uh, respect for views of the State House dome where applicable. Uh, I think this is not applicable. I'm just going to leave that one up to you guys since this was so close to the State House. It's fairly close to the State House, <laughs> but I feel like it's. Yeah. 
not really applicable. Great. Um, for parcels with both river, oh, staff suggests that we don't need to read this one or the next one, which was height nine proportion compatibility of of relationship between the width and height of facades, as well as relationship with width to height of windows and doors. Um, this is acceptable. Rhythm, the visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, in the facade of the building shall create a rhythm. I think this is... Yeah, it's acceptable. It's just there's there yeah. new. I had to leave it on because there's some new doors and openings on that. Yes, I see. Addition. That. Yeah, so but I that's think all. That they are. Yeah. Completely acceptable. Roof shape and equipment consider similar similarly, or compatibility with the roof shapes in immediate area. Conceal rooftop equipment and features on flat roofs from eye level with adjacent public rights of way and from the ground level of any adjacent properties. Um, so this is acceptable with screening as discussed. Architectural features. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim and other forms of molding or character defining detail prevailing on the existing building shall be consistent in the alteration of a building. I think that this is acceptable. Thank you for continuing that cornice around the top. Um, and I think that last one I've highlighted some particular the landscaping There's a few uh, things. It's a little different. I highlighted some stuff that actually looks like it applies. Okay. Landscaping screening and site furnishing projects within the design review overlay district and subject to landscaping requirements in section 3203 shall consider the following. Uh, site furnishings, uh, you just want me to read this last part, that there will be mechanical and equipment screening. So we're all on board with this. Um, and then for historic structures, staff suggests none of these additional criteria apply, just the mechanical and equipment screening as we've discussed above. Uh, so that is acceptable. And I think that that's it on here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to sign my name right here. Yep. Right? So Yep. And you're going to want to do the recommendation, fill that out, and then you can do it before or after everybody right. votes. But the, yeah, it would be the approval with that recommendation on the screening. Right. Yep. So I'm not going to write it right now, but as we're done here, I will write out a uh, recommendation for uh, a lattice work set back from the edge of the cornice of the building to be painted black um, to screen the utilities on the roof. I assume that's acceptable to everybody. Yes. Yes. Great. All in favor of the recommendations? Um, this is Martha. I say yes with the recommendation. Eric says yes. Rebecca says yes. Mm -hmm. Ben says yes. Okay. Liz says yes if you need another vote. <laughs> it's great. Okay. Um, so, Hadesh, yes. uh, what we'll do so that we can get the permits out is Ben will fill out the form the rest of the way and, and spell out the recommendation language about the screening for the rooftop equipment. Yep. Um, and I will send you a photocopy of that page because he signs it and because there's a recommendation that's basically a condition on the permit. I'll have you sign that form as well and then send it back to me. Um, and you can just email back a scan of it and then we'll be able to get the permit issued out. So hopefully we'll be able to get that out this week. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, you're welcome. Uh, and once, once everything is okay, we, we are able to proceed with the work as well for the facade. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yep. Yep. This covers the facade with the brick and the cornice and all of that. Um, and I'll make sure that um, Michelle, the building inspector is coordinated on this. We'll be able to 
to you know move forward and then be able to tie up all the permits for for this work. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Hadesh. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you very much for your project. Thank you for sticking with it after a flood and continuing to have a, an important building exist in our downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now to review the minutes of the April 1st uh, Design Revity Committee meeting, April 1st, 2024. Or has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Yes, I did. I move approval. And this is Martha. I second it. Great. We should vote. <laughs> um, this is Martha. I say yes. Eric says yes. Rebecca says yes. And Ben says yes. And Liz, you weren't there, right? So do you not don't want That's to That's correct. Okay. That's okay. correct. Great. Minutes are approved. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I mean, next, the next meeting is May twentieth. Um, at this moment, I don't have an application, but um, stuff has been coming in in weird little waves. So who knows? Maybe I'll have a whole bunch for you. Um, I know there's a there's a bunch of projects in the works. Um, and so we'll we'll have some some meatier things on the agenda at some point fairly soon, but. Things are sort of preliminary or working through other stages first. Okay. All right. Do okay. I hear a motion to adjourn? This is Martha. I move to adjourn. I'll second that, Liz. All in favor? Martha? Yes. Rebecca? Ben? Liz, Liz yes. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.